because I'm getting to the point, honestly, I'm getting to the point where I'm waiting for them to do their next thing. And I, I don't think it's going to be a bad thing. I think I know what they're going to do, but it's, I would just like them to get it over with and make this big announcement that they're changing the fee structure and the whole thing. That's fine. I'm good with that. I'm, I'm okay with that. But all this other junk, it's, you know, I, I was, I was talking to an investor group who talks to Etsy sellers just to get feedback from people. And they said, you know, how high can they raise the fees before you quit? And I told them, it's not the fees. It's not the fees that make people quit Etsy. It's all this other nonsense that just comes at us left and right. And if you saw my video yesterday, I posted a video that I wanted to put up before this. And the, the thing now is this shipping times thing. It's like this delivery estimates. It's ridiculous. And yeah, I see that their stated goal, and they've said this multiple times, is that they want to reduce shipping time by two days. Etsy doesn't ship anything, so they have no control over that. They don't control the post office. They don't control seller's processing time. But they're sure making a good attempt to control it on paper, you know. So telling customers that they're going to get their items faster than they actually are is not reducing shipping times. It's just giving customers bad information that we are going to have to deal with. Because it's, you know, we're the ones that are going to have to... we. When a customer writes and says, I was supposed to get this three days ago, where is it? And you just mailed it yesterday because that was what your processing time said. What are we supposed to tell them? Well, you know what? I'm going to tell them that Etsy just makes that stuff up because they do. I, I don't know what orifice they're pulling it out of. I kind of do, but it's not it's not good. So watch my video that I posted yesterday if you're not sure what I'm talking about, because it's kind of important that you know what customers are being told so that you can deal with the questions when they do come up. Oh, my God. And it's 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 frustrating. I had someone who bought something two days ago. So it was on, it was on, uh, Sunday. So I wouldn't be able to mail it until Monday. And she messaged me and said, I just bought this. Can I get it by Wednesday? I, I can pay, you know, extra fast shipping if needed. And at least she said that, but a lot of people, my customers, they have to buy things last minute and, you know, and I looked, I was like, oh my God. And I, I said, even with one to two day priority mail, I have not had, I have I have had Priority Express mail not delivered and the post office does not refund it all the time because it they did not refund it. OK, so um, I actually looked at her address and she lives in the same county I do. So luckily I was able to say you can pick it up if you want. But then Etsy doesn't give us a way to mark that it was picked up and tracked. So that's going to ding me star seller wise. I don't care. It's not going to drop my average that much. You know, but for someone that doesn't sell as much as I do, that might make a, a difference. You know, Tracy says, I know you wanted to say, nope, I don't, I don't know. Um, I would blame it on Etsy. Oh, you, oh, to, to tell her, no, she can't get it. Well, I actually looked at where she was because sometimes it will, like, depending if it's some place close and she was really close. So she's going to come pick it up tonight. So that worked out. But usually I would just, I would just say there's no way. So if you have to have it by that date, I would say I will cancel the order for you because I don't think you should take a chance because I can mail it. But that doesn't mean the post office is going to hold up their end of the bargain. And meanwhile, Etsy's over there going, we told her you'd she'd get it yesterday. So I don't know what you're doing, you know. So anyway, OK, let's go over to the things that people in my Facebook group have said they have noticed. And actually, there was a big one yesterday. Payments got glitched up in the U.S. I'm not sure if anybody else did. Um, I got for both of my Etsy shops, I got two notifications that deposits had been made and the, they weren't the same amounts. In one of the shops, it was the same amount. In the other shop, it was a different amount. And I was like and I looked and there was no payment that went through. So apparently that was a technical glitch. They say that it's been fixed, but you should check to make sure that your payments went, excuse me, your payments went through if they said that you were going to get paid. Okay. Cause I want my money. Give me my money. Um, the other thing was people are just seeing, you know, like the star ratings, you know, how that somebody will leave a review on, on mobile. Sometimes they give people an option to rate the product, the customer service, and the delivery. Well, again, that's not something that we do, you know, so 
And I think that was, I think that was like the main stuff. <clears throat> I just want to say again, if you are new on Etsy, you, you know, don't have Etsy be the only place. Look, if this, this is the thing, if you're going to build a brand, okay. And building a brand is important if you're actually building a business, if all you want to do, and this is fine. If all you want to do is sell some stuff that you made, you, you want to just kind of do it as a part-time thing. It's not a big deal. And you're not going to cry and worry about paying your bills. If Etsy shuts your shop down, then have Etsy be the only place you sell. That's fine. It's easy, right? And it does supposedly should bring you traffic because it's a marketplace. However, if you want to build a business that is building a brand where you want people to, if you want people to type your business name into the search bar to find your shop or to find your website, then you should have a website, number one. And you need to build a brand around your business. You can't just put up an Etsy shop and leave it at that. Okay. If it's, if it's just something that you do for fun or part-time, or if you lost that income a hundred percent because they shut your shop, it wouldn't be a disaster. You could recover from that. Then that's, that's different. But if you want, if this is going to be your only income that is going to support you and pay for your bills, then please have a different selling platform. In addition to Etsy, just anywhere, just have anywhere that you can send your customers because if Etsy comes along and shuts your shop down and nobody is immune from this, it could happen to anybody. It happens all the time. I think one of their reports that they do, they do like an annual report of the safety, integrity and safety or whatever it is. And it said something like, we shut down this many shops. And then it, in the, it says, and 97% of those were reopened because they were, it was a mistake. So the vast majority is a mistake when they shut things down. But sometimes they don't reopen them. And I think, you know, we we hear more about this happening, I think, because there are more sellers on Etsy. It's not like the per percentage, like the proportions of people who are being shut down is any higher than it ever has been. But it there's just more people. And it's been it's being done by bots a lot of the time. And that just increases the wrongful terminations and the shutdowns that shouldn't occur and listings that shouldn't be removed. You know, but even if it's even if it's something that was taken down in error, it might not be opened up again. And that's Etsy's Etsy can do that. See, this is you don't have to sell on Etsy. This is the thing. You don't have to sell on Etsy. No one is requiring you to sell on Etsy. We do this with our own free will. OK, it's our own free will that lets us sell on Etsy. You can always close your shop tomorrow. I could close my shop today and walk away that I could do that. I'm not going to, you know, but it, none of us have to sell on Etsy. So if, if you wake up in the morning and you hate Etsy so much, I can't believe they do this. Well, you know what? They've always done it. It's not going to get any better. You don't have to sell on Etsy and, and everyone should have a different, whether it's your own website or you're selling on like in person at fairs, or you're selling on eBay or you're selling Facebook marketplace. I don't know, Craigslist, whatever you're doing, just have someplace else that you can send your customers if you do get your shop shut down. And that's, you know, that's called building a brand. That's, that's called not relying on someone else's platform to build a business because that's dumb. That's just, it's dumb. It's risky and it's dumb. Okay. So, um, the one question that we had, let me actually, I'm going to go over to the community tab. Um, cause I take questions from, members who are channel members before I take questions from the chat and you know you guys can talk about whatever you want in the chat but this was an interesting question that was not about Etsy it was about Shopify um, and it was basically saying that she's going to be selling mostly digital downloads on Shopify but then she's wondering about the sales tax and the VAT in the EU because I think she's in the EU let me see uh, da, 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 da. she says she lives in the EU. Okay. No, Shopify does not collect sales and VAT tax and remit it for you. It's just a platform. You put your website there, you set it up and you're responsible for all the taxes and you, you are responsible for taxes regardless. So on my website, it's not on Shopify, but I'm still responsible for sales tax and I'm still responsible for international taxes if that applies, which it doesn't because I don't sell internationally anymore. Okay. And if you sell digital, see, this is the problem. If you sell digital, 
then you are responsible for taxes that need to be you know, collected for digital sales. And it gets very complicated because some countries have thresholds where if you sell below a certain amount into that country, you don't have to pay and, and register and collect and pay them taxes. So you're going to have to check every single country. And there, there are services that will do this for you, which I would suggest you do if you have a, a website anywhere. Just check to see what you need to do. If you are in the U.S., I can speak to that because I'm in the U.S., you only have to collect sales tax if you reach the threshold for each state. And each each state has different thresholds. Okay, so for the U.S., you can check taxjar.com. And TaxJar has, it's a service where you can have them collect and remit sales tax if you need to. But for most states in the U.S., the threshold is very high and you're never going to meet that unless you actually live in that state or you have nexus in that state and you're required to file. Okay. And this is all stuff you need to check for yourself. I cannot give legal advice and this is tax and accounting advice. I'm not giving advice on this. I'm telling you what I know. And I'm sure that I'm missing nuances here. And you know, with taxes, there's lots of nuances. Um, in the EU and in some other parts of the world, there are no thresholds on digital products. And I started looking into this at one point because I have digital classes. And I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to register with this country individually in that country. So what I did is I have my classes on Teachable and I pay them for the tier of their service level that they collect and remit all the taxes for me. So I don't have to think about it. And it's totally worth it. So for a digital shop on Shopify, you might still have to, even if you're not selling into the EU, and I think that was the comment that you said, I'll have to sell everywhere but the EU, but you might still have to collect and remit the taxes, even if you're not selling to the EU, because every country has its own laws and you need to check that out. I would do some searches for companies that, that do this service for you and see what documentation they have, because a lot of times you will not meet the threshold if it says like you have to sell, you know, $500,000 worth and X number of sales into this state or this country before you have to pay it. You might never reach that, but you know, you never know. Right. And so, since some countries don't have thresholds, you might have to pay VAT and register for VAT tax. If you're going to sell one thing into that country in that year, and, and that's not worth it to me personally. So I pay Teachable to do that. And my digital shop is on Etsy, which collects it and sends it in. And I think I do have some digital stuff on my website, but nobody buys the digital stuff on my website, so I don't care. But I should just get rid of that and put it on Teachable. Um, but I basically, I basically um, just have someone else do it for me. And that I find that the easiest because the price of the price of paying someone to do tax sales tax and that kind of stuff is far cheaper than the amount of time I would have to put into figuring it out and then keeping track of it. What a nightmare. Oh my God. But that's that's one of the benefits of selling on a marketplace is that they do it for you. And not all marketplaces do, you have to check. See, this is you're responsible for everything that happens in your business. So just make sure that you're looking at everything. But um, yeah, and I see Jess's comment. It says, sales tax is the number one reason I haven't set up a full e-commerce website yet. I'm paranoid about getting it wrong. But if you're in the e if you're in the US and you're selling to the US, you probably don't have to pay sales tax if you're not meeting that threshold. You do in your state. You probably have to register in your own state because that's where you have nexus. That's, you have a lo physical location of your business in that state. That's called nexus, Okay. So let's say you have a warehouse somewhere in a different state, which we don't probably, but you have nexus in the state that you live and the nexus where your warehouse is. Sometimes if you do craft fairs in different states, they require you to file sales tax in that state because you're actually physically selling in that state. But in general, it's it, it's not something that you probably have to do because you're probably probably and this is this is why you have to check it out you're probably not going to meet the thresholds for each state because they've set them pretty high but you need to check because some people will meet them so if you're in the u.s go to tax jar if you're outside the u.s you need to just do a, do a search and find services that do this for you um, but the easiest thing to do is just to be on a marketplace that collects it for you that's that's the easiest thing. 
Okay. Um, basically, Botanical says Etsy collects taxes, but says the customer is responsible for VAT. I think that's, they, they do collect it. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, if, if, some, if people know. If you're in the EU, because I know that it is charged, I think, on, on Etsy. Um, and Marin does point out, go imagine collects sales tax for you and offers a website. That is true. But the one, the I, I like that a lot because I can set up over there. I don't have to worry about it. It's another thing I don't have to think about, right? But the, the downside is that you can't sell anything that doesn't follow Go Imagine's rules on your website so just make sure that you understand that because it's a kind of a mirror of your go imagine shop so it does also have to be handmade okay um printress design says my understanding is that on shopify digital sales are to everyone and you can't say just usa i know that there is a way to block certain countries because someone check check this in the public Facebook group, someone posted that she found a way to block, like if someone comes from an EU country to your shop and you're not registered to get sales tax or VAT tax, that Shopify can redirect them to your Etsy shop or they'll see a window pop up that says, go shop on here. Here's the link, right? And then Etsy will collect it for you. I don't have a Shopify shop. So I don't know what that does but there is a way to redirect that so they can look at the ip address and see where someone's coming from and tell them you can't buy that here but here's the place where you can purchase it okay there are plugins to do that probably um and amanda says you block it via the shipping profiles or similar yeah i mean there's so there's ways to do it but you everybody needs to make sure that you're doing it the right way and that's that's it so okay that's the only question that we had that was posted before the live started. So if you guys want to ask questions now, and if I don't know the answer, which I don't know the answer to everything, then we'll see, because there's usually people in the chat, like you guys are, see people know about that and the EU taxes. I don't. Thank you for being helpful in the chat. I appreciate that. But if you're going to ask a question, please put question in big letters, like all caps at the very beginning, because I, I cannot see and YouTube moves fast. So... I hope you'll transition to being a Shopify guru instead of Etsy. I don't, I don't have Shopify. I've set up Shopify websites before just to see how it works. And at one point I was going to change to Shopify and then I'm like, I don't have the emotional capacity to do this because I have a Go Imagine shop. I have a separate website. I have the Etsy shop. I'm not interested in setting up on Shopify. I was thinking about, however, getting some people from my eShop success program who are very familiar with Shopify and doing a Q and A with them about selling on Shopify, and then putting it on my tutorials channel. So I'm I'm was thinking about that today. So I'm going to actually post that in the group after this and see if anyone's interested in doing that because I think it would be helpful. And my tutorials channel is not just about Etsy; it's about selling online in general. And I really am going to start posting more things that are not Etsy related over there. There we go. Okay, question and. I can't see Connie's Connie says it's above, but I can't see question above about my Connie. If you can repost the question, Connie, it would be helpful because I can't scroll back through all the comments and see it. I, I will not be able to find it. Um, okay. I, I think everybody is still trying to help basically botanical with the that thing or somebody that minimums and stuff. You're setting up your Shopify right now. Yeah, Shopify is not that hard to set. It's a little time consuming and you just have to make sure that you have things ready. But it's not hard, hard to set up. You know, it, it does take time. You're not going to go in there. I think I can do it in like an hour. Okay, but then again, that's not loading all your listings. That's getting the thing ready and then you have to load your listings in on top of that. Okay, question is it a bad idea to reuse amazon boxes that have clear prime labels on them for my packages i i wouldn't do that i would take the labels off or just take a marker and scratch them out um yeah i mean i don't i i i'm not a big fan of reusing boxes not because it's like recycling it's not that i like recycling 
Okay, but I'm not a fan of mailing things in boxes that have been mailed once just because of the structural integrity issues. And if they've been smashed by the post office once in transit, I don't know if they're going to hold up for another trip. Um, but if I do, and I have done this just recently, I had to reuse something because it was a large box. I just take a black marker and you're supposed to like cross out all of the barcodes so they don't get scanned by accident. And I just try to take off stickers and stuff like that because that's a little weird. You know, it's, it's just a little strange. Okay. And Connie says a question about your W2. Etsy says, I couldn't get it. I can't help you with that. And I think that the there is no W-2 that Etsy sends you. Are you talking about the 1099? If you don't get a 1099 from Etsy, you don't need that to file your taxes. As long as you're reporting all the income from Etsy, it should all add up. And the 1099 is a reporting form. And I, I think the IRS gets a copy, but it's not something that you have to file with your taxes. Just, you know, if you ever get audited, as long as you've reported all your income, you're, you're not going to get dinged. You know, this is not tax advice. All right. I'm sure your accountant would have a freak out over that. But the fact is that it, you, as long as you're reporting everything that you earned and it adds up with what Etsy says, then that's what's on the 1099 anyway. So that's all right. Just use the Etsy spreadsheets. And there is a, there is a point at which Etsy will not send you more forms. It should be in your downloads. There is no W2 for Etsy. I don't think. I've never filled out a W-2 for Etsy because that's an employer thing and Etsy doesn't hire us. Um, they send us a 1099 just to report the income at the end of the year. So, um, and it says you were doing your taxes, the 1099, and you did report it. And that's fine. I mean, honestly, as long as you're reporting all your income, like I said, it's, it's going to be all right. And you know what? You know what? There... I'm very concerned. I've talked about this before. I'm very conservative with my taxes. And so there's things that I don't like deduction. I don't take a home office deduction. I could easily take this room as a home office deduction. So you take a percentage of your property taxes and all that stuff. I don't do that because that way, if I ever do get audited, I can say, hello, little IRS man. Now that you're sitting here, I've never been able to take a home office deduction because I don't know how to calculate it properly. So let's do that going back 20 years. And then we can see if you owe me money or if I owe you money, because I know I'm not going to owe you money. I have no doubt that I, I will not owe any money because I'm so careful with my taxes. But anyway, um, and Tamara says, flip the box inside out. It looks new. See, that makes me nervous. That makes me nervous because of them getting crushed. That's all. I'm just, I just think about boxes being used over and over to ship things. And it, are they going to get crushed? But that's, you know, it's up to you. Up to you. Um, <laughs> Terry says, when I first found your YouTube channel years ago, I thought you worked for Etsy. And when I heard some of your comments, I thought, oh boy, she's going to be in trouble with them. Yeah, I'm, I don't uh, I don't know. I wonder if Etsy employee, I bet they do watch YouTube. I bet they do. Hi, if you work for Etsy, give me a call because I have some thoughts. Yeah, but I don't work for Etsy. None of the people on YouTube work for Etsy. And that's one of the things is you're not really supposed to use Etsy in your channel name or your business name that's using their trademark. So let's just say if anybody does use that in their channel name or their business name, then they're immediately violating Etsy's terms of use. So you can make your judgment about their judgment based on that. That's all I'll say. Um, let me see. Question. Delivery was on time. The customer did not complain. Didn't leave a review. Why? Can I contact them? No, don't. No, just leave. No, no. Leave customers alone. Don't send them stuff. If they don't contact you, leave them alone. There's no reason to contact a customer if they don't leave a review. I don't leave reviews. A lot of people don't leave reviews. And if, if somebody actually, seriously, this is what would happen. If an Etsy seller wrote to me and said, why didn't you leave a review? It would really help my shop if you did. Well, first, I would probably be nice about it. And I would probably look to see, are they a new shop? Is it an old shop? How much do they supposedly know about this? If it was somebody that looked like they were just a little clueless, I would say, look, don't do that. But if this is somebody who's been around a long time and is just asking me to leave a review because I didn't, I would probably go and give them a low review for being a pest. And y'all can be mad at me for that. But no, don't, don't, no, don't send people, no. 
Etsy harasses people enough. They they get notifications about leaving reviews. So if they don't, then they just didn't want to or they didn't have time or whatever. It's not, it, it doesn't, you know, not everybody leaves reviews. Certainly not. Um, okay, question. Oh, that was the same. That was Connie's question. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm looking. Nobody's, nobody's leaving questions today. What's... What's the, um, no, never mind. Never mind. Does anybody have any questions? I would be glad to wrap this up early. And it's only 2.30. I was making pins earlier. I was doing some pins because I love Pinterest. Pinterest is up to something. I don't know what, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm very interested. I'm very interested. And I don't think I can tell anybody about it. That's the thing. We'll see. And see, right now, no questions are coming through, but probably when when they come through, it'll be like five in a row because YouTube just doesn't show me. Oh, I know what I can do while we're waiting. Let's see. While we are waiting, I still have memberships to give away. Okay, let me see. Join this channel. How do I do this? Membership gifting. Here it is. Okay. You can give people memberships. You can gift them. I hate that so much. You give something to someone. You don't gift them anything for God's sake. Gift is a noun. It's not a verb. What are we doing to the language? Okay. Anyway. Um, you can give people memberships. You can buy memberships for people on this channel or on probably most YouTube channels. You guys have to be opted in to receive the memberships, okay? And I have 10 free memberships that I can give away every month, but YouTube chooses. So I'm just pressing a button and YouTube is giving them two people, okay? So I think that they said that um, the more that you post during a live, the more that you interact with the channel, the more likely it is that you will get a free membership. So I'm gonna click this button right now and I'm giving, not gifting, I'm giving memberships, okay? But um, it says it says I gifted them, but that's a lie. I gave them. I gave them. All right. So anyway, um, and I, I didn't choose you guys, so don't thank me. Thank you, too. But I just pressed a button. That's all I did. Okay. Please, please put question into capital letters because I see some here that I'm going to miss. Okay, Sonia says, got two messages from Bob asking me, how are you? And the message have an image of one of my items. That's total spam. Just that's spam. Just mark it as spam. Don't answer that. Okay, question. What's your advice for standing out on Etsy when selling products that are saturated? Uh, find a different product. I don't know. No, I mean, you have to... The, there's there's two phases of standing out. There's multiple phases of standing out on Etsy. The first one is to have good SEO. And I don't care what anybody says, keywords are still important and they always will be because it's the basic building block of how Etsy understands your listing. And just, just as an example, and this is actually kind of, this is relevant and interesting, okay? Um, the, there were, there's someone in my eShop group who said that she had two listings and she decided to test something out. So she posted both of them. And on one of them, she put a little cute phrase at the end. And I'm not going to say what it was because y'all go and put that in your listings. Um, but she said that listing started getting a lot more activity than the first one. Okay. And I, I said, well, you know, is it getting searched for that phrase? Because if it is, then that's the reason. And she said, yeah, it turns out that's what it was. And that just proves that keywords are still important because everything else was the same except that one phrase was in it. And that's the phrase that people happen to be searching for. Okay, so if you're not putting things in your listings, it's not guaranteed that Etsy will be including it in, in those searches for that. After they find the listings that they're going to rank, then they rank them. And then that is something to do with, you know, buyer behavior, previous clicks and favorites and how many things that sold that, you know, there's other things that go into it other than the SEO, but the SEO is the first step into the door. And if you haven't seen my video about how getting into Etsy is like the club, 
It's like going to the club and trying to get in. The keywords get you past the bouncer. Okay. And once you're in the club, you have to do other stuff, right? But you have to get into the club first before you can have any fun or, or whatever you're going to do. Okay. So, um, the, my, my basic advice for standing out on Etsy is you have to have good pictures because that's one, that's one thing. If people open up a page and every picture looks the same, then you're not going to stand out. Okay. So think of it, think of that, think of what a customer is looking at, but you also have to think about a customer, what a customer is looking for and make sure that those terms are in your listings. And then maybe try to find something that isn't saturated. Like I said, I mean, I kind of say that in a flippant way, but if, if you're going into something and you're, you're trying to sell a product, you can probably find variations on that product that are not as common. They might not be as in demand, but if you find five to 10 to 20 of those types of products, it's going to add up to be more traffic than that one thing that is really competitive. I always look for low competition. I don't care when I'm doing keyword research, I'm just looking at the competition. I'm not looking at anything else. I don't care because generally when people are looking at keyword research, they look for engagement and they look for search volume. And I'm looking at the competition because if a, if a keyword comes up in, in any of those tools, it somebody's searching for it. Somebody searches for things. I mean, what there's some stat about Google searches that, you know, X percent of Google searches that are done every day have never been done before because people just phrase things in a way that's different or they're using a different word or whatever. So anyway, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, it's, it's hard to stand out on Etsy in a saturated market. So, you know, you, you, you have to kind of be, on point. Everything has to be on point, but look at your keywords and make sure that you're throwing different things in there and maybe run some ads. I hate to say it, but if you can get the ball rolling with sales, then that helps your rank, your search ranking more than anything else at this point. All right. Uh, Justina says, sorry, I'm a bit ignorant about that. If I set up my Shopify shop, do I still have to use something like MailChimp to set up an email list? Yes. I don't think that Shopify has an integrated email service, but there's a few that you can use and use them on Shopify. So I, I think that I'm not sure if anybody knows the specific answer to that, but you can use any email service with any website. It just might not integrate as easily as certain other ones, but yeah. Um, I use MailChimp and I, <laughs> I have my website on GoDaddy. Don't do what I did. I know how to, I know how to deal with GoDaddy cause I've been on there for so long, but I would not tell a beginner to use a GoDaddy website cause there's just, it's too many limitations. It's not good. Okay. Debbie says question. If I'm selling the same things in other places that I want to put in my Etsy shop, do the prices need to be the same? No, no, they don't. That's a short answer for that. Um, okay, question. My order tracking only updates halfway, so my order show is in transit. I'm sure they delivered because no one has complained yet. Does Etsy still send reminders to review? I think that they do after after the delivery period is ended. Um, but I do know that they are watching that in transit thing because they there's a few things that happen and make me think that they are okay. But I wouldn't worry about that as long because I've had you know I've had things that are that that were shipped the customer got it they left a good review and it still says it's sitting at my post office waiting to go to the hub hub station so um as long as the customers are not complaining because there's really nothing you can do about it so as long as you're not getting people saying i didn't get my package then you don't need to worry about it i never even look i how, do you guys actually go in to see if things have been delivered i never look i never look and I'm thinking maybe I should. And then I think, why? What's the point? Because what are you going to do? You're going to write to the customer and say, did you get your package yet? It should have been delivered. And then they're like, oh my God, I should have gotten my package. Just let them contact you. And nine times out of 10, they will have gotten it. And you know, I, I never, I never check. <laughs> Don't do what I do. No, do what I do. Just, you know, leave, leave, let sleeping dogs lie. That's a sleeping dog. That's a sleeping dog. Okay. Question, is offering free shipping over $35 really worth it? 
I would say that depends on, I mean, it, it will get you into the free shipping filters. So that's, it's worth it that way. Uh, but it depends on your price point. And if every single thing that you make is going to give them free shipping, you might as well just put free shipping on the item and increase your shipping, your, your item price a little bit. Uh, for me, like most of my things are $12. I have very low price points. So they would have to buy three to get free shipping. And at that point, that's good. I've made more money that way. But if everything that you sell is $30 or $34, number one, you're going to get people writing to you and say, why do I have to pay shipping? It's only $1 away. Or if you have things that are $34 and then maybe a download that's 90 cents, they're going to buy that. And then they'll buy something just to get over that, you know. So it, it really depends on your price point. But as far as Etsy's ranking, yes, it's worth it to have that. If you don't have free shipping on an individual level, an item level, because it, it counts the same as far as being placed in search ranking. So yeah, you just check your price points though. It makes sense for some things and not for others. Okay, question. Did you say Go Imagine offers a standalone website op option? Yes. Does it have its own URL and email? You can get a URL and point it at Go Imagine, or I think they can register one for you. You have to set up your own email. It's the same thing. Um, and yes, they do. When, when you create a Go Imagine shop, it automatically co create, well, it, it depends on what plan you're on. I, I'm on the $10 a month plan. It's $10 a month. So cheap. So cheap, right? And then you have to, uh, there's a transaction fee, which is lower than Etsy's. I don't know. Um, but we don't have all, you know, it's, it's cheaper than selling on Etsy. We'll just put it that way. And the, the website is created at the same time you create your Go Imagine shop. It's a mirror of that on the $10 a month plan. And so for $10 a month, you can have a website with your own URL that you direct to that website. And like I said, I think Go Imagine can register that. I have not set up the web. It's called a mosaic. It's a mosaic website. That's their website service and they'll help you set it up. They, they can give you advice and that kind of stuff and they can help you register a URL. The email again, that's a separate thing. I don't know many websites that have email that goes with it. And if, if they are, it's probably kind of weak. I, I don't know. I just say that and that I'm going to get people, you know, telling me something different, which is fine. But, um, yeah, I don't think that Go Imagine has email integrated with that, but you can use any service that you want to send emails. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm sure I'm probably skipping something, but I'm, I, I'll have to go back. Okay. Question. How about the, the sales filter? Do you still have a sale? To, do you have to be a sale to be included? Is it legal to have one on all the time? It's generally not legal to have a sale on all the time. You can move a sale around from section to section. I recently turned off my sale and that's the deals filter. There's a filter on the app and I think it's on desktop too. But they kind of stopped promoting that as much. It's not there as prominently as it was. It's like, you know, Etsy tends to do this. They'll roll something out and it's a big deal for a week and then it kind of fades away, right? And th that seems to have happened to the deals tab. It's still there. And if people click on it, it's only the things that are on sale. All right, but they have to know that it's there to click on it. And my, I had a sale that was going on and it expired about a week ago and my sales have just increased. So I don't know. It's, it's not necessarily that you have to have a sale all the time and you definitely cannot, I, I don't know any country or state that has, a, it, that makes it legal to have a sale in your shop all the time. Like most, and I've seen YouTube videos, they're like, put your listings up and then put them on a deep discount. That's illegal. You can't do, you have to offer things that is at the right price, like at the regular price for a certain amount of time before you can say it's on sale. That's deceptive consumer practices if you don't. So you need to check that out for yourself, depending on where you live. I know that, I know that the UK has really strict laws about that. And it's probably some EU countries do also. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have a sale on right now and my sales are fine. So I don't know if people are just not using the deals tab as much. And it's only a matter of time until people forget that it's there. It's not as obvious. I don't know. All right. Um, but, you know, Etsy is really pushing sales now. Like you go to Etsy on the homepage, it's Mother's Day sale, Easter sale. Everything is, you know, percentages off. It's the flea market. Did I say that? Did that, did that come out of my mouth? These are the things. Okay. This is the danger of doing lives. 
because unless I really watch my filter, I'm going to say stuff. It is the flea market. It's the swap. It's not even the flea market. It's the swap meat. Okay. You wearing swap meat clothes? Oh, you got that on Etsy? Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> okay. Question. If I change to free shipping for each item, is there a way to increase all the prices at once by a dollar or a percentage amount? Yes. If you go into your listing manager in the list on the dashboard on desktop, I don't know if you can do this on the app. I don't, I don't work on the app, so I don't know because you usually can't do everything. If you go to the listings manager, you can select every listing, like click the box at the top and the little drop down says select all listings, right? And then you can edit and increase the prices by a percentage or a, a dollar amount and it'll increase everything that way. So it, that's very easy to do. And the same thing with decreasing prices, it's it, that's very easy to do. Um, so that's that's not a, you know, that's not a big deal. Okay, question. Is there a way to trademark my designs in the US for digital products? Does it no. Digital, that would not be a trademark, that would be a copyright. A trademark is a business name or the name of a collection or something that's so identifiable with your business that it would be identifiable with your business, basically. So you're talking about a copyright. You can register a copyright. The question is, do you want to pursue that? And do you want to be the one that has to look for people stealing your stuff and hunt them down and send an attorney after them? And if your answer is yes, then good for you. I, I don't have that time. But I would go ahead and um, look into copyright registrations, but that's a copyright, not a trademark. Okay. And you can register things. Oh, all right. Da, 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 da. And basically Botanicals points out by simply creating the product, it does have copyright. That's true, but if you want to really pursue, I mean, if you're going to so far as to register something, like I have a couple copyrights registered and it's because I had issues with people trying to take them, you know, um, so that it's more of a legal protection if you do think you're going to have to deal with somebody legally, but just publishing them means that you have copyright, so you can file takedown requests, but then you have to pursue it. It's the same thing. You still have to pursue it. Okay, question. Any more news and updates about those monthly payment tiers on Etsy? No, and I'm waiting. That's what I'm talking about. I just wish Etsy would just do it. And they, they're rolling out some things. Oh, my God. This is, this is, I knew there was something else. If any of you are tempted to let Etsy rewrite your titles... For outside search engines, why, why? Now I can I can see, and and this it's a very limited thing, and this is something that came across dashboards for some people. It's a beta test. It's not everyone was not offered this, but they basically said, you know, why why don't you get into our test and we're going to use AI to rewrite your titles for better visibility on Google and SEO. And it did say, and on Etsy. And I think it would be just some of your titles. It would just, and you can't choose. It would just be Etsy messing with your titles and how it displays on outside search engines for the most part is, is my understanding of this. Um, in in what, what prize from hell did I win to have Etsy rewrite my titles? Okay, now you might say, well, I'm not making very many sales, so it can't hurt. This is how it could hurt you, okay? AI rewrites your titles. We know how inaccurate AI is, right? If AI rewrites your titles and people buy it thinking they're getting something else, who's the one that's going to have to deal with that? It's not Etsy, it's you. And, and since we have no control over this and we can't see what they're doing, we can't see what Etsy is doing with this, there's absolutely this is such a bad idea. It's such a bad idea. And I, I just, I can't even imagine. Of, of course, I'm like, what idiot would do that? What idiot would say, yes, that's a great idea. And, and of course, I went to the Etsy forums because I was looking for idiots. And there's some people in there. And yeah, okay, I can, they were, they were like, well, I'm not selling anything anyway. But I think, you know, that's one thing. If you're thinking, well, maybe it'll get me more sales. This basically sounds to me like Etsy is just trying to kind of, get things seen in Google better so they can charge us more offsite ads. All right. No, but I, I can see that you would be tempted if you're not getting many sales. And you're like, well, maybe it'll help. 
But honestly, the the issue of what is the AI telling someone they're going to get, and you can't see that, and you have no control over it, that's just such a bad idea. Especially if you have something that could be dangerous. Like if you sell, if what what if you sell um, jewelry, and the AI is saying it's jewelry for children and it's not for children, or like my stuff, if I'm selling something that technically is edible, you can put it on a cake. What if it's telling people that it is like nut free and I do not have a nut free home. I mean, probably everything that I make is nut free because there's no nuts over in this part of my workspace, but I'm not going to tell people that. And I don't know what the AI is telling. I don't know what the AI is saying. I don't know. And Etsy, I, it's just like the most bizarre idea I've ever seen in my life, but the reason that they might be doing this is that in one of the things that was potentially, well, I think somebody posted the surveys already, right? One of the things in this tiered pricing plan that they were talking about was something about let Etsy help you with your search. Let Etsy help you with your SEO. So it could, it could tie into that. They're testing this out. I don't know. Ay, ay, ay. I, it's just, it's the worst idea. And the more you think about it, the more things that come up that could happen. It's, it's a liability. I know, no, 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 no. I, I always draw the line, you know, like if Etsy is giving that, like that pricing calculator, though, <laughs> don't use their pricing calculator. The, the, oh my God, it's the worst. Um, Cause they're comparing your stuff to something that comes from Alibaba, you know, and you're like, no, these are genuine emeralds. You're looking at a plastic bracelet and saying I should charge $10. Anyway, no, don't do it. But the, like the pricing tool is terrible. Um, the, the shipping times I was talking about at the beginning, that's terrible. When, when Etsy steps into our shops, that's when my bat goes up. Okay. It's, it's one thing for them to say, we're changing the structure of the site. Like we're going to be displaying reviews in this way. We're going to do this. We're going to be charging you this fee. That's, that's on their end. But when they take that step and cross over into the way that we run our businesses, that's when it gets to me to be too much. And they've been doing that a lot lately. And the idea that you would let them rewrite your titles with AI is just, it's a wild idea to me. I don't, I don't understand who, who thinks that's a good idea. I don't, does anybody here think it's a good idea and why, and why? And I know with, with that delivery, everybody's going to be like, oh, I think it's a great idea, but I'm not going to say why now, <laughs> you know? No, but I mean, genuinely, I think that the worst thing is the fact that we can't see what it's doing. And we don't see what it's telling people. So you might have people saying, I didn't think that this was what I was going to get. And you're like, well, I, the title is right there. And they're like, well, that's not what I bought. And they could be completely honest about it, you know, because we don't know what they're, what they're seeing. Oh my God. A nine headed horse. That's true. Etsy would sell you. Well, that was the horse with nine eyes. I think it was a nine eyed horse with those tiny slits. It's, it's a long story. If you guys don't know, look up how many eyes does a horse have on Google and there's an article, or like I think it's the Google answer that says a horse has nine eyes that are made of, of of a ball and a tiny slit that slams shut when the horse is afraid. That's an AI response. It's, no, it's just it's bizarre to me. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I just I don't I don't see it. And I, there were people in the forums who said this seems like a good idea. I don't see how it could. Be. I think they were saying, well, I'm not getting any sales, so nothing can get worse. Like it could, it could get worse. It could get worse. Don't do it. Um, but like I said, it probably feeds into one of the things that they're thinking about doing. And it could be a service that they're going to try to sell people. They want to see how it's going to work out. And if people like it and if it increases sales, but see, the thing is it could increase sales, but it might not increase customer satisfaction and that's something that they're not measuring on the other end. They're looking at the revenue numbers, but then they're not looking at the complaints because we're the ones that deal with that. Yeah. So anyway, okay. I don't see any more questions. If anybody has any more questions, we have about eight more minutes. And then I'm, I think I'm going to go force myself to go on a walk. Blech. It's terrible. 
I think two, it was two years ago. I went on a diet in the summer and I lost 20 pounds. And I think it's because I drink a lot of latte. I was sucking down so much latte that I was gaining weight. Right. And it got to the point where I was like, okay, I need to stop. Um, and I, so I lost 20 pounds, which was good for my reflux. It helped because everybody has reflux at my age. Right. But then Thanksgiving happened last year and we made tons of cookies and guess who ate tons of cookies. And my brain is like, sugar is back. And it's, it's just, I, it's like the scale has just been inching up just a little bit, a little bit. And I'm like, okay, I better, I better start watching it. So I'll force myself to go out on a walk. You know, we should all force ourselves to go out on a walk during the day just to leave the house. And I said at the very beginning of this, Wendy said, I'm, I'm listening while I'm skiing. And I'm like that, that would be nice. That would be fun. But then I would be living somewhere where there's snow and I don't like that. So it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. Thank you, Bill, for posting the reminders. I'm going to thank Bill right now for being my moderator. I do appreciate it. And I always forget before I sign off. Um, but I do appreciate the fact that you take the time to do this. And if everybody would like, if you are a member with a purple star, post your favorite emoji that members can post for, for Bill. And please don't make it the crap truck. <laughs> please don't do that. I was thinking of a new emoji. I can't remember what it was now. It was a new emoji I was going to make for this channel. I can't remember what it was, but it was, it was, I don't even know what that was. Um, but it was funny. It was funny. Everybody, haha, it was funny. Anyway. Yeah. Everybody does the claw, the claw. Thank you, Bill. Oh, it is a spring walk in nature. A question. Okay. Question. I re I receive custom order requests through my Etsy shop. These are typically high dollar pieces that require lots of back and forth. Can I require custom orders to go through my website? No, unfortunately that would be fee evasion, fee avoidance on Etsy. Um, and you know, th people are like, well, there's things that I sell on my website that I don't sell on Etsy. And theoretically you can list anything on Etsy if it's handmade. So, and especially if, um, I thought I did a Ramon emoji, did I not? Mm. Um, I thought I had a Ramon emoji. I'm sorry to interrupt myself. Um, it, you know, technically, if you can if you can make it and list it on Etsy, and if the message came through Etsy, then you can't list it off your of your website. Okay. Um, now, I would never tell anyone to take a sale off of Etsy because that they, you could get in trouble for that. Okay. But I know that people do. I would never tell them to do that. Just depending. I think it's tinfoil hat squad is THS. Um, the, the problem now is that if it's a high dollar amount item, then the Etsy purchase protection won't cover it. If it's over 250, which is the cost of the item and the shipping, it includes both. So you're going to have to figure that out for yourself, but technically, no, you cannot take a sale off of Etsy because it is fee avoidance. So don't do it. That's my, that's the official word. Okay. That's all. The tinfoil hat squad is the little characters that you see behind me on the banner. I don't know which, I think it's this hand is pointing at it. Um, yeah. And if, if you don't know what that means, I, I, I can't explain it. It's just, it's his, it's something that's evolved over time. Tinfoil hat is to get rid of the conspiracy theories that we, that Etsy, you know, everybody on YouTube has so many Etsy conspiracy theories and that's what it was. The tin hats, the tinfoil hat squad. Yeah. So, but each, each one of these characters represents something about Etsy. So, and if you're a, if you're a channel member, then you get to see puppet shows that I will do little puppet shows with them. It's very scary. Okay. Question. Is it okay to email large digital files to a customer? Yes, that's fine. Question. Where's the Ramon emoji? I thought that I put one up. Okay. If I don't have a Ramon emoji, I will make one and add it. I'm so, I, I thought that I had that. Maybe I took the picture and I just didn't post it. Or maybe I thought I just need to put one. Ramon is, Ramon is the um, activist investor who has just gotten involved with Etsy. 
That's all. Yeah, Ramon has far more influence than we know. Okay, I'm actually going to wrap this up because I don't see any more questions coming in. And um, that's it. Okay, so thank you all. Thank you, Bill, for being my moderator. I appreciate it. Um, I now I have to find the Zoom window to close this out. Give this video a thumbs up before you leave. Go take a walk. Go do something outside. Breathe the fresh air. It's nice. It's nice outside today where I am. If you're in some place where there's tornadoes, don't go outside. Go in the shelter. Be underground. I would live in a hole if I lived anywhere where there were tornadoes. Oh, my God. All right. I will talk to you guys later, and I will see you next week. And just brace yourselves for when Etsy changes things. I will have a video to post immediately when 